to the latest episode of The Scout Life. Today we are doing something a little bit different. We're not solving a major problem, but we're actually doing something cool. My buddy Jason from Rig Supply is here and we are going to fit one of their slide-in hitch tire carriers. I don't know what they're like, the Ultra Swing, Mega Swing. They have a couple different versions. We're gonna figure that all out. So, Jason, pop in, bro. Hi. So Jason's here. Um, you guys may have uh, seen him before. He's got a cool scout called Nacho. Nacho Dust. Yeah, so uh, anyway, we're gonna get going, man. We're gonna try to fit an Ultra Swing. Ultra so we swing. brought two versions, Multi-Fit and Mega-Fit. Mega-Fit is four inches wider, which I think is gonna be the, the best fit, but we're here to find out. And it's a rad solution, because if you look at the scout, um, we have a step bumper, a factory step bumper, and then like a class three receiver, which a lot of you guys have. Did you like that look of the step bumper? Uh, but we get to solve a uh, cool problem, so check it out. So right now, as a lot of you guys are used to, by the way, dudes, the tailgate works killer still, so that's awesome. Super lubed. Um, so as you know, a lot of Scout, like this is our best alternative, which works with a 31, this is a 3105. The seconds you jump up to a 33, we actually have a bracket that can mount a 33 inside, but it pushes it out a little more. And it's very, uh, like Scouts don't have a ton of space. They have a decent amount. So we're gonna try to get that tire out of there. And there's another cool aspect to this product is that it has um, accessories, man. It's got like a cool table, propane tank. Uh, Jason, what's that accessory bracket called that you have? <laughs> so we just launched the side hack, which side gives hack. you the abil ability to put water, fuel, propane, as you were saying, as well as a table. So you can just run fuel where the table would go or water, but most people without a tailgate enjoy having a table on the go all the time. So the side hat gives you the ability to do it all with not having to choose one or the other. Killer. So let's, uh, let's well, this is all mystery, man. They don't make this model for a Scout. So killer product. The design is, I'm so excited about it. And we're gonna talk through some of those features and benefits. Yeah, so they come fully assembled, right? Yeah. I mean, so no, not fully assembled, but... Not 100%, right. because it's 100% if the customer chooses not to mount a wheel here and does want, wants to just use this as a mounting service. But this is how you, it would come out of the box. So all you have to do in that case is put on your wheel plate wherever you need it, depending on the height, and your accessories, grease your wedge, and install it in the hitch, torque it down, and you're good to go. So it's, yeah, 90% assembled. Cool, and we're gonna, you're gonna show us two different products, so yeah. we'll get them out of the box. All right, so what we have here is our Ultra Swing Multi-Fit, which is a multi dog, dude. <laughs> 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 All right, so what we have here is the Ultra Swing Multi-Fit, and that stands for Multi-Fitment, so it's not universal because that's why we're here. We're here to test it, if it's compatible and it's it's one of those fitments. So you guys are kind of getting the inside scoop on, you know, how we do this. We don't have access to every single vehicle. The scouts are definitely way more unique than, you know, most vehicles out there. So this fits most mid-size, you know, the Tacomas, the Forerunners, those mid-size vehicles. The Mega Fit we really design around those larger, um, format vehicles such as like a, a, a older Suburban, newer Suburban, uh, Sprinter vans, full-size trucks. So my my uh, guess is that the, the Mega Fit will be the, the best fit, um, just based on like the width of a Scout. It's not real narrow, but it's not, you know, crazy big. Um, and there's a few differences that we can go over when we test it and we can show you kind of why. So this is the Mega Fit, full-size, large format. Multi-fit, mid-size, to smaller, like, Subaru's size vehicle. Killer. Well, let's uh, let's slap one on, dude, and see what happens. Okay, so... 
All right, so as you can see here, I have a, it's like a foot or at least 10 inch extension. I think it's a 12 inch um, extension. So you need this because to access your wedge bolt here, this is a solid machine block of steel. There's a bolt that is, is basically tapped into there. So you have threads that are tapped in and as you tighten it, the wedge expands inside. So you need a long extension to access that bolt. So all I did was straight out of the box, you would just need to loosen this wedge slightly so it's not above the hitch tube receiver. So now we can go ahead and just test fit into the hitch. This guy's strong, dude. Well, it's only like 65 pounds. 65 pounds, that's just, not bad. Just an awkward 65. It's a little dark in here, so try to line this up. Maybe a little wonky for me, but we got it. Dude, I'm stoked already. So, the main things we're looking for here is one, bumper interference, two, that the hitch pin hole, you have two on all versions besides our 400 specific version. So we do have a bit of adjustability, one inch in between each one. So we just need to make sure that we can grab at least one of those. So does this have the standard pin that goes through? Yeah, so it uses a standard hitch pin. Um, and we've actually oversized the hole because we want it to be easy enough to right. basically be close right. and not have to be precise. So if we do that hole exactly, some hitch pins or hitch, the hitch pin holes on the actual hitch receiver are you off. Do you off. need me to go grab a hitch pin? No, I brought them. Okay. So we want to just test it up. Um, so yeah, we just need to keep going. And that's the other thing is like, there's debris or any like weld slag, right. paint. So. I have to jog in a little bit. Iowa dirt. Yeah, dude, Dan. I think, I don't know if this receiver was on here when I rescued it from the Lancaster Desert. That's where you got this one? Yeah. It's not it's open back okay. so that's like one thing if you have a closed back if the if the receiver is not long enough you guys do it. all right so fitment wise as you can see it fits great it's nice and snug it's not too high so that was my fear with the multi-fit is actually the difference between these two is the, the rise from the hitch to this pivot is an inch and a half less on these to clear barn doors and tailgates that actually bulge like this. So older, yeah. older style tailgates with step bumpers. Because remember, like, because they have like a table, we don't want this super close. Exactly. 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 So, so here I think, yeah, it's like on this specific receiver, we could probably look at it. Um, it's probably like a Kurt with the model number that, that bolts on there. Um, it's actually just... Yeah, we're probably like quarter inch. Exactly. So the thing is, is the receiver tube and the wedge are all still within the hitch. It's just where the hitch pin, if you look at how far back right. they put it. So in this case, if like we were at my shop, or even if we wanted to do it, we could basically just put in a hitch pin hole closer and you'd actually be able to pull this out oh. an inch to two inches because that, that hitch pin hole is literally the only thing that's off, is it's just recessed. Right. It's Which not, I kind of like it like this. I like that it's... It's tough. It's tough. Hey, but it's like, as you tighten it, it's going to basically level out, and you yeah. have maybe a little over an inch. And it's like perfect. It's within the bumper. Right. So it's not protruding. It's not hanging below the bumper. It, it's actually just giving you protection on the step bumper. The hitch is still the lowest point because it attaches so to it. So we can make that modification, but let's just for the sake of the full experience, can yeah. we build this out and like tighten it up and just yeah, we'll we'll, and... we'll tighten it up, throw a wheel plate on there, yeah. and give people the idea. Scout two mega fit step bumper. This is what it looks like. Yeah, or yeah. a stock C channel. I think yeah, a stock C channel. What actually it's both? You know. 
this thing is gonna have Here we go. no movement. I'm sure. 85 foot and it leveled out. So all we have to do is four bolts for your wheel plate. I'll show you guys how to locate your lugs on your wheel because we have a kind of like a proprietary machined yep. wheel plate system. Then once we locate that, we bolt it on, throw the wheel on and we're- It's minutes, dude. We're off and it race. ships UPS, no problem, right? Or FedEx? FedEx. FedEx, sorry, bro. But yes. One of the things I'm most uh, impressed with is how, I mean, the fit and finish of this product is really, really good, but check out how tight it is in there. So as you can see, 85 foot pounds, that solid machine steel wedge, you're getting no independent movement. It's rad. It's moving the whole vehicle. There's no independent movement in between the hitch and the unit itself. So there's no, you know, you're not gonna get that sort of need to use one of those kind of trailer anti-wobble devices. Right, right. We've built it in as a system. Once you torque it down, obviously just like your lug nuts, regular maintenance, you wanna pull your hitch pin, check that bolt. But as you as you can see, it's just rock solid. So I mean, yeah. that was kind of the the main goal and the ethos we built this entire system around. So we're super stoked and well, let's get the tire out of the back. I'll get the tire yeah. out of the back, you grab that other thing. For sure. But check it out, I mean, look how much more space you have inside there now. Did you said that fits up to a 31? A 31, no problem. We have a, we have an accessory bracket that bolts off our four point roll bar that, that can fit a 33. Okay. Because it moves it out, but then you're losing even more cargo space. Yeah. So that box comes in the package. Yeah, so this is a wheel plate we have I think we have five wheel plates. The modular. So yeah, hardware kit. And the dope 1980 faux turbines. Those are rubber, dude, dude the, the turbines. Dude, these are crazy. Funny story, one time Ben and I were desperate for, what is that, we were man? desperate for a rally wheel. So if you look, these are just, they, there's like a triangle pattern. So these are just like the factory scout rally wheels with a rubber molded turbine plug on the outside. So we went through the process. We heated this up with a torch. You did this. And we melted that turbine. It was damaged anyway, the, the rubber was jacked up. Okay. So we melted it out. It took like two hours. It was dirty, stinky, terrible job. I was wondering why that wheel looked cracked. On yeah. The outside, I was yeah. Like, dude, like, dude, <laughs> there's there's a lot more hash than I thought, dude. <laughs> so then we, we did it, and it turns out the back spacing is is an inch less than the factory rallies because so we're it's narrower. It's, it's in more. It's in more. That's that's good. Well, it kind of and unless you were trying to use it on a, as a set of five rallies. So we had four rallies. Gotcha. So it's on my white traveler right now. It's my spare tire. It's kind of funny story. So here, as I was saying, you got your your wheel upside down, you got your top lug loose, and then you just line up your wheel plate. You drop your lugs in this way, so I know it's gonna be on this, these two bottom ones. Yep. You throw the rest of your capture nuts on there. You recheck position to make sure that the lug is centered with your lug nut hole. Yep. These are lug centric, not hub centric. Right, so right, right. So as you tighten it, it's gonna center it anyway. Uh -huh. But you just get it in the ballpark of oh. definitely close enough to where it's not gouging your threads. And then we'll and literally put the lug nuts on. We're, we're gonna literally like cinch the lug nuts on a little bit, um, just like on one to make sure it centers it up where it's gonna land. Then we'll pull it off, bolt it on there, throw the wheel on, torque them to 85 foot, and uh, let's go camping. Killer. We're not going camping, but no. that would be the, that's how easy it is. Like yeah. you show up that morning <laughs> and you're on the road that night. No big. Unplug it, throw it in the garage like this, and you're good to go. Right, we were just discussing like the Workman bumper is killer. Forgive the dust. I love it. And it's unique, and it's it looks good. I mean, it's just it's a, it's a nice and it's super strong. It gives you a, probably you know arguably a better departure angle um, than than this setup. However. If you're if you have kind of that classic retro look and you want the step bumper, which I love the step bumper, this is such a great option. So they're just different products, you know. And like Jason said, the Workman bumper, you can't take it off. Now, what's rad about this for the Scout owner 
is like Jason, you have a Raptor. Let's yeah. just say you have a Raptor or an F-150 and your Scout. Yep. You could put this on, you same could use unit. this same unit, dude. Yeah, you can use it on two. Yeah, because Megafit. The F-150 uses a Megafit, and then this would use a Megafit based on width and tailgate drops. Or if, heaven does. forbid, you sell the Scout. It comes off. You save it. It's like it's a, an investment that sticks with it, you. Exactly. So, okay, got, so them all, got them all locked in, and then you just do your test fit. It slides right off. So, we'll get this wheel plate mounted on the, the actual arm recheck and make sure they're tight and then we can throw the wheel on <laughs> So what, uh, what is determining the height of this? Just arbitrary at this point? Uh, uh, the highest point. Um, visually, I, I like it high, high as possible. Um, it gives you, if you're using your secondary receiver for like a bike rack or something, it gives you the most access to that. Okay. But with this size tire, you could go pretty much all the way to the bottom and you're good to go. Um, I just think it look, looks the best. It doesn't look like the tire is kind of like a, a like a kid with a low backpack in school. It <laughs> or a saggy like diaper, dude. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to keep it not thinking about poop right now. So that's why I want the backpack. But uh, yeah, droopy, droopy diaper would be also. Nice. All right, we're going to slap the tire on. Okay, just for the sake of research, since we are, this is like kind of our R&D session, dude, so I'm stoked. I'm gonna measure off of two things. Uh, off the flat cross member, I'm looking at a, like seven, right at seven inches from there, and then from the corner cap, I'll go from the, I'm actually gonna go from the bolt that holds the tailgate. Pivot is, Five, so five and seven. Let's go measure a C channel bumper real quick. But that same measurement is so a step bumper was seven to the from the cross member to the outside edge. A chrome C channel is five and a quarter, dude. So it's way tighter. So for the C channel guys out there, if you have a class three like a Kurt brand, it's five and four. So if you have a um, class three Kurt or rigid maybe um, but receiver no problem oh look it's Heather this is the scout life man your garage and your home all right dude let's we ready to slap the tire up there all right so we got the wheel plate bolting on I would like to just give it one last while it's on there because you have it holding itself you know it's not you're not just trying to muscle the wheel plate with yes tightening it so you get some nice levers on there and just keep it nice and tight make sure they don't slip you could also just throw like some blue lock tight and then one got, killer mud star dude coming up you got this mud star man usually look at the top lug boom Pretty so that's another Dude, that's a cool thing yeah the high this is in the highest position in the highest position and it fully clears look at that so Scrap. narrow though this is probably what nine inch wide this is a the wheel or like the tire the, like the, the tires wheel. are ten five okay so ten five so if you have like a twelve five if you looked at it up and down um yeah you might you'd be getting close, close but you have the ability to drop it down That's right. of yep. half an inch each way. So with a positive offset too, like, or a negative offset, it's gonna push you low. So it's cool that in the highest position with the most common size. Let's throw this on her so she don't fall off. She's, she's nice. Mounted, she's on there. So let's get her cracked open. Crack your latch. Pull your secondary safety pin. Can you just really quick the sec there's there's the main latch that is yeah, really sweet. The main latch, the little aluminum machine latch, and then we have this little. I'll pull it off so you can see it. So we put it on a carabiner so you can leave that carabiner on. And then it comes with these 
American made hand sewn in our town by our friends. Sick. That Colfax Design make these for us. So this secondary safety pin acts as a fail safe for that latch if you were to forget yep. to do that or if that latch was to fail for any reason. But it also acts as your locking position pin. Cool. So you just basically line it up. You got your table here or whatever. It locks it in place and you can get so you guys have like an overland trailer, yeah. a Ito, no problem there. And then you have your secondary receiver. So you can imagine if you have a bike rack on there, that's gonna swing with your tire, with your table, with yes. your fuel, all that stuff. So you don't lose any of the hitch function. You just add all of this. And then if for some reason you need to move that to another vehicle, you can. And what's uh, also due to sweet. So your, what do you call that? The table, do you need that other bracket? So our table that we make, um, it comes with everything you need to install the table. And so the table goes straight on Straight into the C channel here. the table that drops down. Exactly, so it bolts in with four bolts. Um, we do weld nuts, so all you do is just drive the bolts in. So you hold the bracket with one hand, thread your bolts in, and then you just, six bolts. But what's that new bolt. bracket, you, I keep forgetting the name? It's a side hack. The side hack, where does that go? That goes on the outside of this main upright. Okay. So it's gonna give you the ability to run water here, propane on the outside, gas there, don't cook with the gas. Don't, I can't believe I would have to say that, but I've seen people <laughs> doing it. Yeah, they just got a gas can right Jeez, there. They got the yeah. stove going. It's like, <laughs> I hope that's just for looks, but right. yeah, that gives you the ability to, you know, it opened up accessorizing the accessory. So this is your that's modular right. hitch rack. Your needs are always changing. Sometimes you need a lot of water. Sometimes you need a lot of fuel. You can go double, double dip on that, go propane on the outside, fuel, whatever. And we have a bunch of other stuff that it's coming down the pipeline that we're currently testing right now that are just add on to that. So stainless steel bung, and this is a, it's got a ball detent, so you just drop that pin down and you can hear that. Oh, cool. That clicks okay. in there. And then when I close this latch, it actually puts loads pressure into that, mm. that pin. So I'm yanking on this oh, pin right now cool, and it's cool. not gonna come out. So that's how you operate it. Open your latch, pull your pin, it releases the pressure, but it just gives you a super solid, you know, they work together as a system. So that pins, and it also acts as a safety device. So. It's really simple. Included with every single ultra swing, you get a license oh, nice. relocation bracket. We also make a support bracket that goes behind that that gives you plug and play for that four pin trailer. It gives you a license plate light right off that. Oh, really? No okay. Just plug that thing right in. That's genius. And it bolts right up, has a factory light. So a lot of, a lot of people are doing, you know, cross state lines where maybe one state you didn't, your state, your home state, you don't need a license plate light, but California, you definitely do. So, and if like, you know, if you don't have the four pin, off. so on this truck, I actually have a seven pin right here. With an adapter. Yes. Yep. So I would run a seven pin with it with a, to a four pin. Exactly. So that it's like six bucks on Amazon. Um, we might may start just having them as a, a convenience thing is like, hey, if you have a, a seven pin, this just adapts it to four pin. But most modern vehicles are gonna have a seven or a four. The majority are four. Majority are actually both. Well, most scouts don't have anything. Nothing. So yeah. you can pull off the tailgate and just tap off. There's a wire right over here yep. that you can actually just tap into and run a wire exactly. pretty simply. A lot of people have done that with modern vehicles. They would just grab like, they. they they go off their running light and they would just right. do those little bullet bolt lights. Yep. That's a great option. We actually did a video. Here's how you could do it before we offered our light kit. Okay. But we wanted to have a kind of a one-stop shop. We do one thing. We try to do it as best as we can. And we want to have everybody's questions and concerns covered and at least acknowledge that they exist. So comes with a, a legal light mount or available and a license plate bracket included. So, yeah. I mean customizable you can run any kind of lock on mountain bike grip that you like if you don't like the one that's included but you know we think it gives a, a cool look matches the branding so in a nutshell that, that's it ultra swing on a scout too sick first time ever right actually yeah dude even though he has a scout this is the first time i feel privileged i i think you're the best candidate to, to actually get the first and we're so stoked to uh work with you but let, let's let's wrap up the video okay and uh we want 
I want Jason to take this baby for a little spin, mm. him and Rachel. Can't wait. All right, thanks for joining us on this episode of The Scout Life. Um, I'm super stoked because the Scout got like, maybe not for the, because I got the roof rack, but I love adventuring in this rig. We have a fun trip coming up next year, a place that I've wanted to go to for a long time. Jason and Rachel are going to be on mm -hmm. that trip with Nacho Dust. Yep. That's going to be anyway, an inaugural trip. For yes. Us, so. And thanks for being in the shop. Thanks for having Appreciate us. Appreciate it, bro. Yep. And uh, I think the plan, if we can just speak off the record, is that we would carry these on the Anything Scout website. We'll get the, the curated model. Yeah. And we'll just, we'll, we'll be a... We'll dial in the, the, the experience for that. So yes. this is going to be some homework on my end, some homework on your end. Yep. But the idea was to see if we could offer this to the Scout community as a viable option, as something that, like you said, I love the Workman bumper. I loved it, the little shorty. I think it's rad. Um, but it may not be the right solution for everybody. Especially if we can't get them to exactly. get them. So this is really just like an offering as another option. It's not really a replacement. It's not a band-aid. This is no, like, it's a killer. This it's is a, the product for a, a lot solution. of people. So yeah, the idea is to have them be available. Dude, it looks it's, killer, it man. It looks great. I it mean, looks so good. I'm so stoked. Yeah, if this bumper was black, most people would probably think it's a like a, an right. integrated swing out bumper. That's right. So I mean, I love, I love the look the of The silver's thing. tight, dude. Yeah. Um, anyway, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Um, next time we'll be back in the shop. We'll be actually fixing some stuff. I got a lot of stuff to do. Pinion seal, some rear brakes. I've, I've talked about this ad nauseum. I have a vibration in this thing that mm -hmm. we got to solve. The, the looming other big project is the doors and windows. A lot of work. Being a part of the scout life. This guy's living the scout life, running out of gas, doing everything. Dude, twice in a year now. T18. The worst of the worst. I got drum brakes, T18, 304, and I have no glass besides on the hard top. And it's no gasket sealed around the water. <laughs> it sounds like you're just dragging cans and <laughs> driving a JV welded driver. Makes me want to go for a drive. Yeah, so, let's all right, go. see you next time.